human being where inner and outer worlds converge. In this matrix or labyrinth of existence, we can become quite habituated into remaining as surface dwellers, living inundated by all the outward distractions that life on earth provides. We may ask of ourselves, am I availing myself of the spiritual guidance, direction, and wisdom that comes from within? This would be a source of wisdom that not only provides an inner perception of bliss, relaxation, insight, or affirms a truth of some sort that one may believe in, but an inner intuition that can also make a positive contribution to one's outward life on the physical plane here in terra firma. Mystics teach that the inner and outer life are not separate. There is a relationship between one and the other. A life-affirming state of being on the inside leads one to making the outward life into something more heavenly too. There are both outward and inward avenues to wisdom. There is the wisdom of living teachers with us now, as well as the wisdom left behind in the form of world scriptures and spiritual classics or discourses by teachers of previous generations. Outward instruction and inspiration is priceless, and there is also an inner voice of the silence we can tap into. The art of listening in the silence of meditation provides us with countless opportunities to see clearly without the usual day-to-day -day distractions, perceiving the events of our life from a higher vantage point. As Thomas Kelly, the Quaker mystic, said in his spiritual classic, A Testament of Devotion, deep within us all there is an amazing inner sanctuary of the soul, a holy place, a divine center, a speaking voice to which we may continually return. Eternity is at our hearts, pressing upon our time-torn lives, warming us with intimations of an astounding destiny, calling us home unto itself, yielding to these persuasions, gladly committing ourselves in body and soul, utterly and completely to the light within is the beginning of true life. It is a dynamic center, a creative life that presses to birth within us. One of my favorite passages from the Shabd Pratap Ashram website. No mission is of greater importance to a person than the awareness of his own consciousness. The profound significance and purpose of his existence on earth and to find out the path for ultimate bliss, eternal happiness, and cheerfulness, i.e. the quest for truth. Baba Jamal Singh said, There is nothing more important than meditation. Increase this practice from day to day. Never decrease it. The following is from Jaaladeen Rumi, the famous Sufi poet mystic. Everything you see has its roots in the unseen world. The forms may change, yet the essence remains the same. Every wonderful sight will vanish, every sweet word will fade, but do not be disheartened. The source they come from is eternal, growing, branching out, giving new life and new joy. Why do you weep? The source is within you, and this whole world is springing up from it. This is from Sheikh Kabir Helminski, also of the Sufi tradition. Anyone who has probed the inner life, who has sat in silence long enough to experience the stillness of the mind, behind its apparent noise, is faced with a mystery. Apart from all the outer attractions of life in the world, there exists at the center of human consciousness something quite satisfying and beautiful in itself. 
a beauty without features. The mystery is not so much that these two dimensions exist, an outer world and the mystery of the inner world, but that we are suspended between them as a space in which both worlds meet, as if the human being is the meeting point, the threshold between two worlds. Over the centuries, contemplative souls have taught that the human body is a kind of temple and that within this temple are portals that lead to other dimensions. That by looking within this microcosm, we may access the macrocosm of the heavens. The Sufi mystic and philosopher Abin Arabi wrote in his spiritual classic, Bezels of Wisdom, he, Allah, brought the cosmos into being as constituting an unseen realm and a sensory realm so that we might perceive the inner through our unseen and the outer through our sensory aspect. Gospel of Thomas saying 113, his students said to him, when will the kingdom come? Yeshua replied, it will not come because you are watching for it. No one will announce, look, here it is, or look, there it is. The Father's kingdom is spread out upon the earth, and people do not see it. A similar saying from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. When the Blessed One had said these things, he greeted them all. Peace be with you, he said. Acquire my peace within yourselves. Be on your guard so that no one deceives you by saying, Look over here or look over there. For the Son of Man, the child of true humanity, exists within you. Follow it. Those who search for it will find it. The great Sufi poet Baba Farid said, An ocean is within your heart. O oh, Farid, why do you trudge along the shore? Dive into the depths. The pearl shall be found within. In the Book of the Odes is a beautiful psalm. Through the word, the worlds converse and converge. The highest one gave the word to his worlds which interpret his own beauty, recite his praise, reveal his thought, are instructors of his works. For the swiftness of the word is ineffable. Its course knows no end. It never fails. It stands. Its descent and its way are incomprehensible. And through the word, the worlds converse. The mouth of the highest one spoke to them and he was made clear by his word. The dwelling place of the word is man, and its truth is love. George Ornsby Jones once said, the plains of heaven are about us everywhere. One has only to know this simple truth consciously, and then we will be free. George Arnsby Jones speaking of meditation practice that leads to exploring inner space. We human beings are children of both worlds. We human beings are a tree of life with roots in the earth and branches rising into a mystic sky. 